Wait a second. Suppose you got this man that's preaching the gospel that just studies and studies and studies and prays and prays and prays and works and works and works for the Lord. And then you got this person over here that makes fun of God. It goes around and tells people the Bible is not true. It goes around and tells people don't believe that. It's, it's nothing but hearsay. It's not true. The Lord loves that preacher and that denier the same, exact same way with the exact same love. He doesn't love them any different. You see, if you look at what the Apostle Paul says here, notice, notice, kind of, kind of look at these verses. I'm just going to kind of go through them. Uh, look at verse number 2. He says, No, I have prophecy and understand all mysteries. In other words, if I am a genius in the Bible, if you come to me and I can tell you anything about the Bible you need to know, just ask me. But I don't have unconditional love. It means nothing. Notice verse 3. If I go out here and I, I give food to the, to the poor and I help others, the underprivileged, and, and I do this for people and I do this to help people, but yet I really don't have unconditional love. It profits me nothing. You see, true love is patient. True love is kind. True love does not promote itself. He even said here, he said uh, in verse number 3, he said, even if I sacrifice myself, I give myself to be burned. In other words, I, I lay at stake, so I'll sacrifice myself. But deep down inside, I really don't have a godly love. It means nothing. How can anybody have this much love for mankind? Because of that first word. Holy. It's a cut away. Separate. And through that holiness, through God being holy, He has that grace. You and I are nothing but sinners. And God says, you know what? You cannot work hard enough you cannot love hard enough. You can't do enough good deeds, give enough money to enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to give you my son. But you've got to accept it. It's called grace. It's a gift. Why would anybody do that? Because he doesn't storage us like a love for a little child. He doesn't flee oh, like a friendship love. It's not a romantic love like heroes. It's a godly. It's a godly. Let me prove to you one verse. It's not on your handouts. But I want to share one verse with you. It's from the book of Luke. And it's in Luke chapter 23, verse number 34. Listen to this. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They parted his raiment, stripped him of his clothes, and cast lots. Jesus, hanging on the cross, and he said, Father, forgive these people who are doing this to me. But they don't realize what they're doing. You see, Jesus seen the big picture. He knew that they could crucify Him, but He knew if they were not going to get saved, they were going to spend eternity in hell, and He did not want that to happen. Because it says it's God's will that all should come to repentance. But it's a choice that you and I have to make. Amen? Amen. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when he said that, they stripped him down and they cast stones at him. But he still loved him. What is true love? It's the love of Jesus. And no matter who you are, where you're from, what you've done in your life, what you believe, Jesus 
still loves you. Now, let me go back to what I want you to leave with. Nobody enters into the kingdom unsaved. And nobody spends eternity in hell unloved. Jesus gives every person an option. You accept the fact that He's holy. And you accept the fact that He has given you the free gift. You have to accept that gift. That's the only way to heaven. If you never accept that gift and you're basing it upon you, you're a good person. You're, you're better than most church members. You, you want to do the right things in, in the world today. You want to help other people. That's not going to do it. Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Now, watch this not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. In verse 9, he goes back and supports that. He says, And not of works, lest any man should boast. What am I trying to say? You can't earn Jesus' love. He already loves you. But you have a choice to make to accept His grace and His love and spend eternal life with Him in heaven or to reject His love and to reject His grace. And to reject His holiness. And spend eternity in hell. But He's still going to love you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, You know our hearts. Lord, You know where we stand this morning. God, as our pianist comes, and song leader comes, Lord, I pray right now that You're working on each and every heart. God, this is true love. It's what You did for us on Calvary's cross. Lord, You said Your Son only begotten, which means one of a kind. No other like Him. Lord, oftentimes we look and Lord, we want to earn Your love and, and we, want to, we want to do things so that You love us even more. But Lord, You can't love us any more than what You already do. No matter who we are or what we've done, what we said or what we thought. You just love us. And Lord, as we come to You this morning, Lord, let us stop and understand about that love, about that grace, and that You are holy. Cut away. Lord, there's so many times when I look at that Scripture it says, my ways are not Your ways, my thoughts are not Your thoughts. And God, there's so many times that we try to bring you down to our level and think the way we think. And you say, I'm not that way. You tell us to love one another. You tell us to pray for our enemies. You tell us that vengeance is yours. You tell us to trust in you. Lord, sometimes we just want to make up our own rules and our own sayings and claim that it's biblical. But God... That's not holiness. Lord, help us to see it your way. Help us to understand how much you love us. And God, through that love for us, it will motivate us. And we'll have a passion, a desire to get on fire for you. And to serve you, to love you, to learn more about you. Lord, I pray this morning that whatever moves need to be made here this morning. Maybe someone here is this morning, they're not saved. Maybe they think they've done things too bad or they don't think that they can have the right. Lord, I pray this morning that they understand that you love them just as much as you do me or Moses or anybody else in the Bible. Lord, I pray this morning there's someone here that's saved. Them. Lord, even though baptism doesn't save them, Lord, you, you, you want us to do that. It's just the right thing to do. Lord, maybe they need to come this morning and they need to say, I'm already saved. I just need to set a time or appointment to where I can be baptized. Lord, there may be some here this morning that's from another church that would like to join Westside. This, this is where you're leading. God, I pray that they'll come this morning. Lord, if it's, if it's just they need to come talk to you, maybe they just need to come to the altar and say, Lord, I want to thank you for your love and for your mercy and for your grace. 
Lord, they don't have to say nothing to me. They can come right down here and just pray to you. But Lord, this morning, I pray that you just open our hearts, open our minds, and help us to receive your word. And Lord, as we prove that you love everyone, no matter what, Lord, I pray that it touches our hearts. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.